When we try to turn on the immune system to cancer, the cancer has ways to escape the immune system with something called checkpoints or triggering breaks to the immune system. There's an early break that's called CTLA-4 that can be unleashed by ipilimumab. And that therapy has become the standard of care for patients with advanced melanoma because it has improved survival over all the uh, treatments like chemotherapies. When the immune system is activated and goes into the tumor, there's another checkpoint or break that, that comes into play, which is the PD-1 break. And pembrolizumab takes away this late break on the effector stage of, of the immune system. We compared head to head what's the current standard releasing the CTLA-4 break with, uh, with pembrolizumab and with the releasing of the, this late immune break PD-1 with pembrolizumab. And what are the numbers coming out of this? So we entered over 800 patients and we randomized patients to two dosing regimens of pembrolizumab and one dosing regimen of ipilimumab. And the primary endpoints were overall survival and progression-free survival. All of the study endpoints support the benefit of pembrolizumab over ipilimumab. There's an improvement in 31 to 37 percent in, in, in overall survival with pembrolizumab over ipilimumab. The progression-free survival uh, improves by 1.8 fold and the response rate improves from, uh, 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 close to triples with pembrolizumab compared to ipilimumab. Are you getting these long-term survivors that were beginning in the case of ipilimumab to hint at the word cure? This study has a follow-up of, of 14, uh, 14 months and at that time 90% of the responses in all three study arms, the pembrolizumab arms or the ipilimumab, continue to respond. So, so far it seems like the durability of responses is comparable with ipilimumab and pembrolizumab, but we'll have to wait 10 years. We haven't waited 10 years with pembrolizumab. We know with ipilimumab, once there's a response that lasts for two to three years, that tends to be a durable response. What about toxicity? The toxicity was grade one to two or low grade toxicity in the majority of cases, uh, and it was evident in all of three study arms. Uh, patients on pembrolizumab had higher fatigue uh, and, and vitiligo or depigmentation of the skin, while patients with ipilimumab had higher frequency of diarrhea. The clinically significant toxicities, grade three to four, were higher with ipilimumab compared to pembrolizumab. It was around 20% with ipilimumab and around 10 to 13% uh, with pembrolizumab. So the, from the risk-benefit ratio, it's clear that pembrolizumab is superior to, to ipilimumab. Could you give me just a quick summary of, of how much superior pembrolizumab is looking on these different counts? So pembrolizumab improved the overall survival by 31 to 37 percent compared to ipilimumab. The progression-free survival was improved close to twofold or doubling the progression-free survival at six months with pembrolizumab compared to ipilimumab. And the response rate close to tripled with pembrolizumab compared to ipilimumab. Now, is this a class effect? Could you have other PD-1 inhibitors that would do the same? Yes, I think that the totality of the data suggests that pembrolizumab is behaving clinically similar to another PD-1 antibody, nivolumab. And we'll have to have more data in melanoma, which is not ready yet, on the PD-L1 antibodies. But I would assume that we'll have several agents with similar activity as single agents. Would you recommend the community to shift over to using pembrolizumab rather than ipilimumab at this point? I hope the drug regulatory agencies around the world act on this data and make these agents available to patients. It's better to treat and treat well and treat up front than to deal with a whole bunch of complications of progressive cancer. So I think it's going to be cost effective for society to offer these agents up front, the PD-1 antibodies up front to patients across the world. What about combinations of, of different immunotherapies? So there's the patients who don't respond to these therapies, which in melanoma is around two thirds of the cases, uh, uh, speaking in general terms. So for those patients, we have to devise some other treatment. And by understanding the mechanism of how this therapy responds in some patients, we're realizing that in some other patients, what we'll need to do is to bring T cells or immune system cells into tumors. And those combinations that can do that are being tested prospectively in the clinic. Okay. 
so finally, what, what's your take home message for clinicians then? Um, it's been an exciting time of applying science to patient care and we're seeing another advance by rationally designing new drugs that unleash the immune system. Once we unleash the immune system, the immune system can attack the cancer and has memory and can do it durably. So I think we have a bright future of developing these agents and other agents alone and in combinations for patients.